Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 175, and for this one, we're doing the second half of our Texas tour, and uh, there are some massive all-ins. There are some very, very special guests. Uh, very excited for you guys to watch this, so hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. For this trip, we're in Austin, Texas, rocking out, living on the edge, driving scooters one-handed while trying to film. This is not safe. We check out Rainy Street, where there are a ton of great bars and restaurants, plus, there are plenty of friendly animals. The people are friendly as well. We walked by this poker game going on and they invite us in to play with them. It'd be fun to hop in, but we've got to get some rest before the event at Texas Card House the next day. Yeah, this guy never shows up. But we do, every table's filled, the energy is insane, people are trying their best, but they can't hold their excitement in at all. Looking good, dude. Thanks. All right. This guy's the best. Before the game starts, I'm given five Bradley dollars. You can see where my left thumb is. It says in small print that it's not legal tender. These dollars are worth so much more. I use them to buy into the game. I'm given $2,000 in chips in exchange. We take our seat in the 5-5 game. On my right, we have three-time gold bracelet winner Doug Polk, who now lives in Austin. The last several years, he's been super helpful when it comes to giving me advice about poker and YouTube. If it wasn't for him, Jason Somerville, and Andrew Nimi, I likely wouldn't have started my own channel. Very cool of Doug to come out for the meetup game, and he brought Jacob Dulla. He's a mixed game stud. He's an instructor for a course on upswing that you should definitely check out if you're interested in improving your mixed game skills. I'll have a link in the description box below for that course as well as other upswing courses with discounts. In the first interesting hand, we're dealt pocket tens under the gun plus two. Doug straddled, Jake raises to 35. I call, and so does everyone else at the table except the player on my left. We're going eight ways to the flop. It's nine three deuce with two diamonds. Pretty good since we have an overpair to the board and we shouldn't be up against two pair very often. Checks to me, I can't allow anyone to see a free card. I bet 140. With so many other opponents, I could certainly be up against a set that doesn't seem to be the case. The small blind is the only caller. I'm not sure how, but it's down to heads up and I'm in position. The turn is the six of spades. We get lucky to avoid both an overcard and a diamond. The small blind checks. He has 600 in his stack, just over pot size bet. I jammed and mostly deny equity from flush draws. I could still potentially get called by worse hands like ace nine as well. The small blind isn't sure what to do. He eventually folds. I show him the overpair. It's a friendly game. I'm happy to let people here know when they make good decisions. He tell me that he had jack 10 of diamonds, which was a flush draw and one over. We win a solid pod to get the night started out on the right foot. We're in Texas, so we're playing lots of PLO double board palm pot, just like we did in the last video from Houston. We pick up ace 10, nine deuce with two hearts in the big blind. We hit both boards hard. On top, we have the nut flush draw. On bottom, we have trip nines, and there are only three total combinations of hands that have a speed on the board since three nines and two kings are accounted for. Checks Doug on the button, he's gonna fire. Another pot. 90, 90. Zero. Jake folds in the small blind. I'm really strong on one board. All I have on the second board is potential. If I can win the entire pot right now without making a hand on both boards, I'd consider that a win. I put in the check raise repot, which exudes a ton of strength since I still have seven opponents behind me. Folds back to Doug. He's not going anywhere. He calls. It'd be really nice to turn a heart here. On the top board, we at least make a pair of tens. Not a ton of help though. The bottom turn is the seven of clubs, which doesn't help us at all. Doug has a thousand left. I'm keeping my foot on the gas. Your first turn? Um, eight, 10. Oh, man, you have no serious That's something that's terrifying to hear if that's the only hand that he's worried about being up against. He clearly has something good and isn't liking the fact that he's facing a large bet after getting check raised. When I have equity on two boards, rather than check call, I prefer to force my opponents into making difficult decisions, even if they're world-class players like Doug. He's deep in the tank, thinking about all the worst-case scenarios. Oh, Quite a bit of time goes by, and I'm over here sweating, rooting for a fold. Eight, ten. Eight, ten. Eight, ten. Over a full minute elapses before Doug comes to his decision, and we're gonna need some help. All right, all right. Yeah, it sounds like I'm not in great shape. That's better. Oh, no. We get a great river on the top board where we needed it most. It's a jack of hearts giving us the absolute nuts. 
the bottom river is the five of diamonds. It's no help to us, but we still have trips and we faded both flush drops. It's a huge pot for this game. Unfortunately, we're only gonna win half of it. Doug has nine, seven, six, three, so he had us smoked on one flop. and We had him in pretty bad shape on the other, but he drilled one of seven outs to take the lead everywhere when the majority of the money was put in. We still had a good chunk of equity and we realized some of it on the river to split the pot. Oh man, I had you. Wait, what did you have on this one? I tripped flush. nines, nut flush, and a pair. Yeah. Oh man, I was doing real good here. Yeah, when nice. you said if you had if you have kings, I'm gonna be in bad shape. I was like, That's oh, I guess I'm yeah. fucking crushed. Yeah. I'm happy with the outcome. Doug, rightfully not so much. Damn it. Sorry for the net roll, everybody. <laughs> I switched tables where I play another PLO double board bomb pot. I have top two on both boards. The small blind bets pot. I repot it. The small blind calls. It's down to heads up. We both check turn. We both check when the rivers come out as well. I end up getting three quartered. The small blind and I had very similar hands since each of us flopped top two pair on both boards. He had a heart flush draw that got there on the river, so he avoids the even chop. After being up several hundred early on, I'm stuck a little when I'm dealt pocket sevens under the gun. I open to 20, a player in middle position calls, cutoff calls, then one of the guys from next gen poker, either Curly Mo or Frankie, three bets to 110. I always get those guys mixed up. I call for 90 more, the middle position player folds, cutoff calls, we're going three ways to the flop, it's 5-4 deuce with two hearts, we've got an overpair and a backdoor straight draw. Small blind bets 155. It's too early for me to want to lay this down. I call, hoping that the cutoff doesn't have anything good because I don't want to get raised or play the rest of this hand from out of position. Cutoff folds, it's down to heads up. The turn is the eight of spades giving us a gutter. It's a board that won't connect well with the three betters preflop range. Small blind checks, he has slightly more than a pot size bet left in his stack. Maybe he has an overpair, probably not though. I don't really want to see another card come out. I jam for 750 effective. Even if I get called and I'm behind, I should have six outs. Small blind folds, I'd later see on social media. He was trying to bluff me. I'm not sure what he had. We win the pot, but we're still down a bit. Next, I've got seven six suited in middle position. I open to 20. A longtime viewer named Chris, three bets of 60 from the hijack. I don't particularly like folding suited connectors. I call for 40 more. We're heads up, and the flop is 986 with two diamonds. We've got bottom pair and an open-ended straight draw. I check. The hijack makes a slight down bet to 55. That's reasonable. I call. The turn is the king of hearts, not my favorite card to see. I check. The hijack checks back. This is interesting. Maybe he has something like ace, king, queens, jacks, or tens. The river is the seven of diamonds. We make two pair, but there are four to the straight, and the flush draw gets there as well. Some draws probably would have continued firing as a bluff on the turn, so I'm actually not too concerned about being beat. I don't want to check and have all worse hands check back. I bet 125 for pretty thin value. If I get raised, I'll just have to fold. The opponent isn't happy to be facing a bet. I'm feeling much better about my hand, especially when I hear what he thinks that I got there with. That's not what I have, but I'm glad that he's worried about it. He calls, I turn over the winner. He wasn't expecting to get beat by two pair, especially bottom two. He shows for the vlog that he has a hand that there's just no right way to play. Jiggities. No good, no good. Going for thin value pays off. We win another pot. This one gets us back over the even mark for the day. Soon after, the guys at the PLO table lure me over. PLO is not my game at all, but I tell them I'll play one round with them. The very first hand is a double board bomb pot. I actually prefer to play double board rather than single board. We've got a fun looking starting hand with king, queen, jack, 10, and lots of spades. On the first board, we have top pair and a gutter. We smash the second board with top two pair and an open-ended straight draw. The big blind bets 30. I call, the button calls, three of us make it to the turn, the top one is the seven of diamonds, the bottom turn is the nine of spades giving us a straight and a flush draw to go along with it. The big blind checks, I bet pot for value. The button folds, the big blind is more tenacious than Jack Black, he calls and he's not going to like the river cards. The first one is the nine of diamonds giving us the queen high straight, the second river is the deuce of diamonds, we still have the nuts there. The big blind checks, he has 335 in his stack. Let's see if he wants to play for all of it. Good pot. The opponent considers his options, then throws in a calling chip. I'm hoping that I'm good enough to win on both boards. Two straights. Brad mm. Scoops? Mm. You guys brought me over here for PLO. I don't know what you want me to do, man. Why'd you have Brad Scoop as first hand? First hand of PLO. <laughs> what a luck box. It might be better than you guys think. Oh, nice I'm definitely not better than they think, but shh. 
trying to instill fear in them, don't let them know that I have very little clue as to what I'm doing in PLO or in life. I'm up $640 on the night, so things are going pretty well overall. I head to the next stop where it's time for another PLO double board bomb pot, even though we're back to a no limit table. I've got 10, 9, 7, 3 with two spades. Despite most of the hands being Texas Hold'em, there's just so much action in PLO ones that they end up being the most exciting hands to highlight. This isn't something that's special for meetup games either. These types of bomb pots is what they normally do in Texas to increase the action, and there's going to be a lot of action in this hand. We had the nuts on one board using our 9-7 for a straight, and really nothing going for us on the king-king-8 board. I guess that I'll just have to bluff some people off of half the pot. I bet 80 from middle position, the cutoff, small blind, and under the gun all call. Four of us are seeing the turn. The first one is the 10 of hearts giving us at least some showdown value, as well as an open-ender to go along with it. Second turn is the Jack of Diamonds. We no longer have the nuts there since Queen 9 is beating us. Checks to me. I'm still going full speed ahead. I bet pot once more. I want as many hands with equity out as possible, especially if they have a speed on the King King 10 8 board. The cutoff folds. The small blind has 885 in his stack and calls, leaving himself with 485 behind. The under the gun player has exactly 960. He's not in the folding mood, and neither am I. All in. Race all in. All right, I call. The small blind calls for slightly less. We're playing a massive three-way PLO double board all in. There's over 3,000 in the middle, and I don't feel that great about either board given the action. The dealer does a good job of getting the pot figured out. There's a $150 side pot that I'm competing with the under the gun player for. He's the one who ripped it. I figured there's a decent chance that I get scooped until the under the gun player turns over his cards. Can I get it in bad, Brad? He didn't get it in good. The opponent has the same straight as me with 9-7, and I'm currently beating him with my pair of 10s on the other board. If nothing changes, I'll win three quarters against him, but we still don't know what the small blind has. The first river is the queen of diamonds, locking up at least three-fourths of a relatively small side pot. The second river is the ace of diamonds. I don't feel too good about it because king-queen scoops and backdoor diamonds gets there. I don't have anything close to the nuts on either board. Not looking great for me at all. We're all still waiting for the small blind to show us what he's going to scoop us with. He's not very eager to turn his cards over, though. Well, what, is, what do you have? No, I think I have, queen, right? I have two pair. Two pair on the bottom with a major plus draw. Sweet, so I win three quarters. Yeah. I beat the small blind on both boards. He had the ace high club flush draw initially and ended with aces and eights where I have the straight, and he only has a pair of eights where I have the pair of tens. I don't know how my hand is good with a pair of tens to win the top board, and no one else does either. Ten wins on top. Ten wins on top. You actually, you actually. Eight on the top. I'm the best PLO player of all time. <laughs> Between Houston and Austin, I've run nearly as good as I could possibly run in double board PLO bomb pots. There's only really been one big pot that I've lost, and there have been several huge ones that I've won at least three quarters of. It's amazing when you're getting good runouts and things are going your way. It's soul crushing when they aren't. Luckily, I end up with a large profit from this one. I certainly wasn't feeling very confident once two opponents were all in on the turn. With that win, I'm up almost 2,000 on the night. Guess what? It's PLO double board bomb pot time again. I've got King 10 7 7 with no suit. I don't particularly love my hand since the only strong value I have is a set of sevens on one board, and that's not even the nuts. Under the gun bets 50. I'm going to try and keep this pot smaller. I call. The small blind and big blind also call. At least I'm playing this hand in position. Four of us are advancing to the semi-final round. The first turn is the ace of clubs. Not going to help us at all. The second is the four of diamonds. Six four or four deuce would be a pretty sweet hand to have. The small blind and big blind check. Under the gun continues firing, this time for 125. I can't fold for that amount. I call. The small blind and big blind fold. It's heads up. The first river is a 10. Our set isn't looking too bad on that board. The second river is a 3. We still don't have much there. The opponent bets 200. I'm getting a good price to hopefully win at least half the pot. All right, I hope we're chopping a call. I got a four and I got a straight on the top. That's exactly what I did not want to hear. The opponent wrecks my world with a six four. He has a straight where I have a set and then trip fours where I've got pretty much nothing. We lose a medium sized chunk of our profit back. We're still up about 1500 on the night. A few orbits later, I'm dealt pocket sixes under the gun plus one. I raise the 20. Small blind calls. Big blind calls, we're going three ways to the flop. It's king nine six with two spades. We flop bottom set in a multi-way pot. It checks to me, I bet 40. Small blind calls, the big blind folds, it's down to heads up. The turn is the jack of diamonds. Small blind checks, I'm not too worried about queen 10 getting there. I bet 110. Small blind calls once more. The river is the 10 of hearts. There are four to the straight on board. Small blind checks, I'm not gonna go for value. I check back. I'm glad I did because the small blind has queen jack offsuit with no spade for a straight. He wins it. 
My hand is worthless. Oh, set of sixes. After that, I'd win another PLO double board bomb pot with 7-4 for a straight on one board, pocket aces on the other. Unfortunately, the big blind doesn't call my river bet after he called my check raise on the turn. The night's coming to a close, but as I'm racking up, I stick around for one last PLO double board. We look down at ace, queen, nine, six with two diamonds in the big blind. That's good for top pair on both boards. There are only three opponents in the hand. We all check. The top turn gives us aces and sixes. The bottom turn downgrades us to second pair. The small blind checks. I bet 40, which is the size of the pot. All three opponents call, but I don't think they'll have much. Maybe someone has a king that I'll have to bluff him off of so I can win the entire pot. The first river is an eight. At least the club flush draw misses there. The second river is the five of diamonds. The small blind checks. I want a scoop, so I bet the pot. You never know what people will be willing to fold when you're aggressive. That's how I like to play these hands. The under the gun player folds. The button folds. It's down to the small blind. He's thinking for a long time. I guess I'll continue to rack up while I wait. Finally, the opponent comes to a decision, and I'm shocked at what he does with his hand. Fold. Yes. Triple what? Oh, that's way too good. You can't yeah. fold that. Ace three? That's wow. easy no, no, hand for you to have. That's not what I have. Ace six. I just thought ace three. Playing one of the boards. Somehow, we get that one through to win once more before calling it a night. Great night tonight. We played for about eight hours. Uh, the place was packed earlier. Had a bunch of huge PLO double board bomb pots. I won 2,040. Um, Doug was here, Jake was here. So that was really cool for them to show up. And uh, just, it, it was just a lot of fun with everybody. So this Texas Card House road trip has been uh, great. Um, I think I'm up 7,500 over the last three days of playing. Tomorrow we're playing a 5-5 streamed game and that's uncapped. So uh, I guess there's some people in there that make the game crazy. So I'm a bit concerned about uh, that, but you know, hopefully it'll go well. And uh, this trip has been pretty awesome so far. The next day I buy into the streamed game for 2,500. That's the max to start out. Then it's max to stack when play begins. We've got a great cast of characters. We drew for seats, but I couldn't have handpicked a better one for this game. On my direct right is DQ. He plays a wild form of poker. He's there to have a good time and make sure everyone else at the table does as well. He can be tricky to play against because he's not afraid to pull the trigger on some big bluffs. He also plays quite a few hands blind. I wasn't initially planning on including this in a vlog because you can see most of the hands on the replay of the stream, but there's one hand I got bluffed on from Greg. Greg's the commentator for the Dallas Texas Card House stream. Unfortunately, there's no footage at all from it because the stream got cut off right as he was getting me good. I do talk about it in the commentary that I'll include at the very end though. I don't start out the session all that hot. I get stuck a few thousand early on. By the time the stream ends, I'm only down about 500. And then after the stream ends is when some really big pots start happening. Andrew would get it all in here with Ace King against DQ's King Jack suited preflop. He wins a massive pot of around 5,000. Then I pick up King Jack offsuit under the gun plus two and there's a $50 double straddle on. I'm first to act and I open to 150. Under the gun calls, under the gun plus one calls for 100 more. That's DQ. We're going three ways to the flop. It's ace, queen, 10 with two hearts. We flop the nuts. If we listen closely, we hear DQ commentate for us, so I don't have to. Yeah. Grant's keeping his hand, but he hopes to win. Very much. DQ hasn't looked, but he will check. What will Brad do next? He's been about 200 in total. No one has a heart. DQ's gonna look at one card first and call. <laughs> and then DQ's gonna check. Heads up, check card. Oh no. Four hundred. How much? Four hundred. DQ's gonna check a second card and he's gonna call again. Wow. And DQ's gonna check again. One thousand. One thousand? Wow, you have huge money. Because he did put it on the video. Ooh, did you turn that flush? Oh, I missed that. You did. You turned that flush. I fold. I fold. Did not turn that flush. Flop. Flop it. Flop it. Nice, nice fold, man. Nice fold. I'd get completely out of the hole. I've got a lot of chips in front of me, but I'm in for most of it. I added on a few times throughout the night to be in for 7,000 total. I still rack up over 8,000 to book a win of 1180 in my last session of the trip. 
between Houston and Austin, I won over 8,500 in four days of playing. It was a great time playing poker in Texas. <laughs> That's it for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. Um, big thanks to the Texas Card House. As you guys can see, the action out there is nuts. Um, thanks to uh, Next Gen Poker. Those guys are really nice and um, they've got a cool uh, poker vlog. So I have a link down below in the description box to them. And uh, huge thanks to Doug Polk and Jacob Dalla for coming out. Um, I mentioned before that I'll have links in the description box below to Upswing's courses uh, with, with discounts. And um, I, I also wanted to mention at this time that I'm doing poker coaching with Nick Petrangelo and we're videoing those sessions. We're going through vlog hands and we're doing a lot more. And uh, those videos are going to be part of a course that's gonna come out on Upswing's site. And I'm super, super pumped about it. I've been on a big upswing lately, as you guys have seen. Part of that is obviously because I'm running good, but um, another part of it is because uh, Nick is helping me think about poker in ways that I wasn't thinking about it before. And um, poker's just a game of small edges, and uh, I'm trying to play higher and higher stakes. So uh, it's been awesome to study with him, and I can't wait for that course to come out. It'll probably come out maybe in, I think, a couple months or maybe right before the series or right after the series starts somewhere in that time frame so um, be on the lookout for that I'll have more information uh, regarding that course in future episodes as well all right stay safe hope you're all doing well good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time all right so you remember the uh, yeah, yeah so uh Hand goes, it's a straddle pot. I'm on the button with a seven of clubs. Um, DQ limps in, I raise to 75 because I figure I have the best hand and DQ is never folding anything ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Checks out. And uh, Greg free bets to 275, I believe. Um, DQ calls. Greg's been three betting a little bit. Seems like that's his strategy out of the small blind. Anytime Andrew or I uh, open, he's got to he's got to make a vlog. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. so I, I I was contemplating. I was kind of thinking about four betting, but then I was like, my hand's good enough. I'll just call in position. And the flop came ace jack five rainbow. Greg bets 250, so he down bets. DQ folds, I call. Turn is six, I believe, and there's no suit out there. So it's still rainbow. Greg bets 700. I call. River is a king, which is kind of the worst card in the deck for me. And then he rips it, and in my mind, I thought he ripped it for 2,300. There was a, I think, there was like a, a count. Um, and then I was kind of staring Greg down for a long time, and uh, I folded. He got it through. He showed king queen offsuit, and uh, yeah, he won the hand, man. He bluffed me good. He bluffed you good. Is it gonna make the vlog? I don't know. Dude, that's the thing. Is that um, I wasn't actually <laughs> planning on making a vlog of this, but now that I'm stuck, and now that that hand didn't even make the stream, uh, I, I told Greg that I would make a vlog of it no matter what to show the to show the hand.